Hey guys, welcome to this, I guess, honest opinion slash final impressions of the Infinite Warfare beta, or something along those lines, I guess. Uh, sorry this took so long, um, the beta ended like two days ago, but this took a lot more thinking than I thought it would. I actually started doing an actual, like, logical breakdown of everything, and I ended up getting carried away with it, so... I guess better late than never. I'm pretty sure every other person that plays Call of Duty has probably already made one of these, but anyways, um, the beta was, like I've said many, many times, it was mixed for me as an individual. I don't know about anyone else. Um, I've seen all different sides of the spectrum. I've seen people who still defend this game, like, a little bit more than they should. I've seen other people actually give their honest opinion and say the game's not that great in their opinion. Um, I've seen people kind of in the middle like me. Um, personally, I see a lot of good and bad with this game. Uh, we should probably start with the good, because it's going to be a, a nice long train of negative. Um, weapon balancing, I will say, is pretty good in this game, at least in my experience. Um, I think the weapon classes all have a purpose. There is no one class that dominates the other classes, which I think is fantastic. Because in previous games, you could argue that, for example, Black Ops 2, you could say that, um, for the most part, assault rifles, um, SMGs, and in the beginning, sniper rifles, like, before they got nerfed, were really dominant in the game, and it was like a, I guess, a head, like, a head battle to figure out which one was the most overpowered of the group. And, um, for a while, um, people just ended up using the MSMC, the PDW, um, people used the Ballista and the DSR-50, and AN-94 pretty much, like, dominated all of the weapon classes, just rendering everything else in the weapon class, like, everything else, every other gun, like, obsolete, and as time went on, they nerfed some things, and eventually the balancing got a little better, people started using other guns, but, you know, what I'm saying is, like, in Black Ops 2, in the beginning, like, you could tell that there was, some guns had a lead over other guns. In this game, I'm not really seeing that for the most part. Um, in the SMGs, there are some, there's some favorites for sure, like the RPR Evo, like, you know, basically the Ripper from Ghost. Um, people are using that Airad a little bit. Um, people are starting to use the Volk, but I think that was just because it got released, like, pretty much the day before the game, uh, the beta ended. Um, people use the NV4, but I'm pretty sure that's just because it was an early unlock. So there's a pretty good spread of weapon usage. Um, people started using the LMGs, which I didn't think was going to happen. Um, the LMGs, for the most part, felt very strong at range, which I thought was nice. That's what an LMG should be, you know, good suppressing fire at range. That's what it's meant to do. Um, sniper rifles are arguably overpowered. Um, I've talked to a lot of people, including snipers, and the aim assist definitely feels very strong, like pre-patch Black Ops 2, um, Modern Warfare 2, COD 4 kinds of aim assist, so that's, uh, I'm not gonna go in depth, but I will say that the snipers are a little bit too strong in my opinion, um, they kind of break the balance a little bit, um, like I've said, I've been hit by some shots that I really don't think I should have been hit by, uh, maybe you guys have experienced that too, but for the most part I will say that the guns are pretty balanced, you know, pistols will beat you up close for the most part, which I have noticed, um, assault rifles will beat out SMGs at mid-range, um, SMGs will most always beat out an assault rifle at close range, LMGs have the advantage at long range and at extreme long range, sniper rifles, unless you're a quick scoper, um, you will beat out everyone else at long range, so, you know, for the most part I am very happy with the weapon mounts, oh, <laughs> forgot shotguns, sorry, um, shotguns too, um, most people... Didn't really use those either, but um, for the few occasions where I got hit by a Banshee or that rapid-fire shotgun thing, um, I did lose. I did lose in close quarters, which you should, because you sacrifice your long-range potential by using a shotgun. Except for one exception, that um, Spaz 15 or whatever it is that you unlock last. Um, someone tried to use that against me like a few times, and I noticed he was getting a few too many hit markers on me, so maybe that needs to be buffed, but... Um, I guess uh, maybe more on that later, I suppose, but yeah, so weapon balancing, pretty good. Um, the new, I guess, supply drop system, kind of upset it's still in the game, but I will say that the new salvage bonuses, you know, your ability to unlock the guns as you play is a good implement. I will say, you know, Infinity War definitely had the right idea with that. You no longer have to pay into the system to, you know, get what you want. You can play the game and you can unlock the variants you want, which I think is... Fantastic. That's what I think should have been implemented in the first place because like I've said before when you pay for a game You shouldn't have to pay even more into the game to get access to content within it when you you know You pay you pay $60 for the full game You shouldn't have to pay even more to unlock you know parts of the game that you know You want to try but can't because you don't have it unlocked for some reason So I am glad that infinity ward you know took the extra step 
and you know and introduced a system where you can play the game you know the more you play the game the more savage you get you get salvage bonuses and key bonuses for logging in you know daily and stuff like that so eventually as long as you play the game you should be able to get the variants you want which i think is it's great you know you should be able to get the guns you want you know in, in a game like this you know where it's so you know pivotal to your weapon class you know getting the best gun possible you know guns you maybe want to try guns that look you know your kind like your kind of gun maybe like um for example, in some of these, some of this gameplay, I unlock the the like the legendary type two. I can't remember its name, but I do like the advantage of you know going on a three kill streak and getting a free perk. You know, I like that. So if you want to unlock it, you know you shouldn't have to pay into a system or you know wait forever to unlock like get keys and stuff like that by playing the game. You know, you should have a system where it's easier for you to get the stuff you want. That's what I'm trying to say. But. Um, <laughs> Did I just run through all the good stuff? Um, map size, for the most part, is very close quarters. Now I'm going to get in kind of into the mixed kind of thing, where I'm kind of like saying it's either a good thing or a bad thing. Um, map size is pretty small, but then again, we only got access to about four maps. Um, Frost does not have a lot of sidelines. Terminal does not have a lot of sidelines. Throwback has very few sidelines. Um, Frontier, very, very few. There's only one sideline, and it's right down the middle. So there aren't a lot of sidelines. There's not a lot of long, like places where you can have long-range combat. So um, it's going to be a lot of running gunning, I guess, from what my perspective or from what I'm seeing right now. Um, despite, I guess, all my um, instructions about you know ADSing, you know, aim down sight first, get the first shot off. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of running gunning as the game goes on you know people adapt people eventually you know get familiar with the maps and then they get you know more confident in their abilities and then you know just the running gunning begins to get more natural so i do feel that eventually there's going to be a lot of people just running around with smgs and maybe some fast firing assault rifles and stuff like that shotguns so you know for or at least right now um the maps do feel very small I'm a, i don't snipe i don't really use um, lmgs that much so you know i pretty much felt right at home with these maps so um for me it was okay that's why i'm saying this is like a mixed bag so you know if you don't like small maps you like bigger maps kind of like ghost then this will probably be a negative for you but i was fine with it i can understand why it would be a negative that's why i'm saying this is kind of mixed um also mixed is the rigs um <laughs> You can take this however you want to, because I know people were using fair amounts of both of these rigs. Um, the FTL and the Synaptic. Um, if you don't know what I mean, I'm talking about the Eraser and the uh, Equalizers. Um, the dual-wield, like, machine guns on the robot's arms and that, like, Annihilator on steroids. It's just... To me, those those two were probably the most dominant of the like the rig weapons or whatever called the payloads in the entire beta. Like every, I saw at least a, two people, one to two people using that in every single lobby. I am I am not joking. Whether they were on my team or not, there was always someone in my lobby using one of those like payloads and the rigs. So um, I don't have much footage. Um, just you know, purely because of personal opinion, I did not use the Synaptics equalizers because I felt it was just kind of like the FMG9s or the G18s from um, Modern Warfare 2, FMG9s from Modern Warfare 3, if you ever played any of those games, you know exactly what I'm talking about and how frustrating it is to die by those. Um, I died plenty of times by those equalizers um, over and over and over and losing a lot of streaks and a lot of um, footage, which I was going to show you guys. I was trying to get, you know, a lot of good gun streaks and stuff. You know, of course, I want the, the gameplay to be as good as possible, and every time an equalizer would just get shoved in my face and I would die, so... Simply for that reason, I never use the Synaptic because I, f just for personal opinion, I feel like that's a gun uh, or it's a weapon that requires no skill that you know can be sprayed and prayed and you can just succeed, which I, I don't like because I do like I do like gun battles, I do like fair gunfights, I do like it when you know you you have a gun battle and you know it's whoever has the best skill wins. I don't like seeing all that spraying and praying. So personally, I do not like the Synaptic and the Equalizer, so I did not use it. But the Eraser I did use once, and it is obnoxiously powerful. Um, think of the Annihilator from Black Ops 3, but think of it, you could fire it like three times as fast and it has more ammo. So that's that's a formula for something extremely overpowered. It one shot kills, I don't know its ability against equipment and slash or um, airstreaks like UAVs and stuff like that, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's very powerful. But against us, you know, us players, it is a one shot kill and you can spam it. And that's a very, very bad, that's a bad setup for gun balance. So I think those two need to be nerfed. Now, I will say that I'm pretty sure they did nerf the equalizers in the beta. I'm pretty sure it was 120 bullets and then it switched to 84 based on live streams I've seen. So 
I'm sure that Infinity Ward knows that there's some there's some um, unbalance in the rigs and that some rigs render others, you know, just obsolete. Um, people use that, I think, uh, what was it called? The guy with the black hole gun. Um, I, I can't, it's like the one you unlocked at level 23 before you got the, um, the sniper guy. Um, whoever launched those black holes everywhere. People started using that in like, for one day, like when it was unlockable, but then they stopped using him. Um, the sniper guy, very rarely did I ever get killed by that like, sniper rifle rig or, or like specialist weapon from that assassin guy so really it was it's just all up to the ftl like the ftl guy who had the eraser and the um the synaptic who has the equalizer so really those dominated and occasionally you'd see a warfighter with his claw which is basically also kind of like the equalizer so really what i'm trying to say is that the rigs are also a mixed like a mixed bag um, for the most part it was okay. It wasn't a huge like. It, of course, you know, like what rig you pick defines like how you're gonna play. But it, it's not as important as the gun you choose. Like you, you get your weapon occasionally. You don't get it the whole game. So that's why I'm kind of saying this is kind of mixed. So yeah, it, it's it's what you make it out to be. I'm just saying that some rigs are more powerful than others, and you know people had favorites, and I just happened to see a few too many of these unbalanced rigs in my gaming experience. But um, I guess moving on to um, the variants, where this is going to start getting a little more negative. Um, yeah, I feel like now that we have access to all these, I feel like now that you can unlock these through, through salvage, um, we're not going to be seeing a lot of default weapons. Um, we're not going to see any default, like, for example, Type 2s or NV4s. You know, as soon as you unlock the next best variant, you'll, you'll probably use it, because from what I can see, there are no negatives to each variant, um, like the NV4 Fallout that I was using for a good chunk of the beta. It has the ability to get the atomizer strike, or you know, the the new tactical nuke, and it reduces recoil, but no downside. So I don't see why you wouldn't want to use it, and I don't think I saw many drawbacks on any other variants. So really, it begs the question: Why would you use any other, you know, gun except the variant of you know the cl the gun that you want to use? You know, why would you use the default weapon when you have a variant that has no downside and is much better than the default? It's just it kind of renders it obsolete, and so that's what I'm kind of thinking. You know, back in Advanced Warfare, um, some people used the BAL-27 even after it got nerfed, but as soon as they unlocked the Obsidian Steed, I guarantee you they would never use that default BAL again. So that's what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, now that we can unlock the variants, I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing variants everywhere. There will be, like, there's just, people will probably be using the Elite, or sorry, the Epic version of whatever that um, gun is, and they'll... Probably be just a race to see you can get the best gun, and um, that, for better or for worse, that could just lead to a lot of um, interesting gunfights. So um, I guess I might leave that one on the air in the air too. It might also be mixed, but I'm just saying I'm noticing a problem with that. So yeah, it, it is what it is, I guess. But um, I guess getting more negative or going down a more negative slope. Um, spawns. Um, I brought up spawns before, but spawns in this game need to be fixed. There's so many times where I've spawned around, spawned, you know, next to, when I'm on a gun streak, people spawn next to me. Um, it just, it's not balanced. I don't think there's much spawn protection in this game, and that is very worrying. Um, to someone that has seen spawn trapping happening, who has been a victim of spawn trapping in the past, I will say that it's very frustrating, and this game can make it very easy to get spawn traps, so... Um, I don't know how that gets fixed, I don't know the, I guess, the system behind spawn protection, but it needs to get implemented in this game. There, there's no if, ands, or buts. It, it needs to get fixed, because at this point, it is just way too easy to die in spawn, and I know how frustrating that is. I know, PL, I know maybe some people here have felt it too, how like pissed off you get when you die in spawn as soon as you, you know, press the X button to get back in, you know, respawn, you know, it's just... It's not a good feeling, and you know, for the good of the community, I do hope Infinity Ward figures out why these spawns are so messed up and what needs to get fixed, because it's just frustrating, and you know, it's, it, it feel like it's something that's easier to fix than a lot of the other things that have happened here, but anyways, yeah, that, that's, that's basically the gist of it. Of course, you know, you have server connection issues, which, you know, was a huge negative, but I will just chalk that up to being, you know, testing out the servers with the beta, and, and it just for some reason, they weren't ready. And, you know, they weren't prepared to see the millions of people that would get on for whatever reason. So I will just say, I'll just give them the benefit of the doubt and say that, you know, it's not completely Infinity Ward's fault. And they didn't properly, you know, accommodate this 
obvious problem that probably was going to occur anyways. So yeah, anyways, um, that's basically my two cents on this. Um, like I said before in a previous video, it's not a zero or a one in my opinion. You know, so many people say like, oh, this game sucks. You know, the guns are so unbalanced. Everything is unbalanced. It's so broken. Zero, 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 one, 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 half a point, half a point. You know, it's not, to me, it's, it has problems, but like I've said, every Call of Duty has some kind of problem you can point out. Every No, no game is perfect. It, it will always have a problem. Every game has a problem. This game just happens to have a few more. So, while it's not a perfect game and it's not a fantastic game by any means, it's not a zero or a one. Now, is it worth the $60 you pay for it? Arguably, you could steer a little bit more in the no direction, but is it a one or a zero? No, it's, it's not in my opinion. It's like a 5 or on a very, very good day when you're having a lot of fun, it can occasionally be a 6. But is it a 1 or a 0? No, that's just, in my opinion, I think that's just more, that's more like leftover feelings from the fact that, you know, Infinity War did not deliver and give us a boots on the ground, you know, game, which I really, really want as well. But, you know, I also, also feel that, you know, um, games can't really be judged based on, you know, one fact. And I do feel that the fact that this there is boosting in this game I, and people didn't want that, I do feel that, that that one mistake tends to come to the surface a little bit more than, you know, all this other stuff that I've been talking about. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for sticking around for this video. I'm very sorry it was extremely long, but, you know, I had a, had a lot of thoughts that were kind of dwelling underneath. And um, whether you guys agree with me or not, you know, I would love to know. Um, if you have similar opinions, then, you know, I guess let me know down below. If you have different opinions, let me know down below. You know, I'd love to hear, you know, your guys' um, take on this whole beta if you were a part of it. But yeah, guys, thanks again so much for sticking around for this video. Um, and like always, hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay in the background. Um, did try my darndest to get some gameplay when I wasn't getting equalized, when I could actually find lobbies, and when I wasn't getting booted for whatever network fails. But yeah, so thanks guys so much for sticking around for this video. And like always, have an awesome day. I will see you guys in the next one.